The sponsor of today's video is Webull. Simply use the link down below my description box, deposit any amount of money, and we each get five stocks. It's that simple, and by the way, it's limited time, so get on it, use that link, enjoy. Now let's get into the video. What's going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So today, it's Sunday. You guys know what we do every single Sunday, right? We're going to break down some stocks, some charts, my thoughts on the markets, and my game plan overall for this week in the market so sit back relax hit the like button subscribe check out my patreon link down below if you guys want all my buy sells call outs morning update videos more access to me throughout the day plus more all of that's on patreon link down below and with that being said let's get right into the video so last week the markets were an absolute roller coaster ride you guys can see here on spy we started off the week roughly at about let's see here where were we about 465 then we got down to about 460 we had that double bottom breakout all the way to 474 which mind you guys was an all-time high and then on thursday Heading into Friday, this thing started to collapse. So we started off pretty low in the week. We rallied up, hit an all-time high, and then we started to collapse yet again. And at this point in time, we're hovering right above 460, 461 as of Friday's aftermarket session. So at this point in time, I'm going to clear this and let me redraw it. I want to see if uh, SPY is going to end up holding this channel or if it's going to clearly collapse under it, which we did start seeing signs of on Friday, by the way, guys. I mean, take a look at what happened on Friday. We dumped under 460 momentarily. We got down to about 458, but then we rallied above 460 after market hours. So technically, yes, we're still above that double bottom 460 low from earlier last week. Um, so that is, uh, it's worth mentioning and keeping an eye on. So if we break under 460, expect spy to take out the 448 low or at least test it right and when it comes to triple q let's pop that up triple q is also holding this channel on the hourly chart we're holding the bottom of the uptrending channel so this looks like it wants to start ripping up but the second it breaks under let's say 382 to 380 there is a high likelihood, in my opinion, of course, all this is my opinion, that Triple Q does take out or at least test, probably take out since it is closer to the lows now. Um, pretty, really close, honestly. Um, I think it's going to probably take the lows out from 378 or at 378, which uh, those lows were from the beginning of this month of December. So keep your eyes on the 20 day time frame when it comes to Triple Q and spy and of course as always keep your eyes on the vix guys the volatility index which like the markets this took a uh, roller coaster ride last week we went from 19 on the vix to 23 down to about 17 18 um, i believe that was on thursday morning then we saw a nice pop above 23 again so it's not like we saw volatility um, as high as we saw earlier in the month of december and late november but still volatility as long as it's above 20, that is pretty crazy. Not extremely crazy, but it's more volatile. Uh, there's more volatility than usual, right? If we're above 20, at least taking a look here on the four hour and on the yearly chart when it comes to VIX, to the VIX. So let me know down below in the comments. What do you guys think? As always, I'd love to know. Make sure to hit the like button as well if you haven't done so already and subscribe because that really helps me out overall in the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, let's talk about some stocks because this week you might think, oh, earnings, earnings season's over. Well, it is for a lot of the big companies, but this week we still have a couple of good companies, notable companies that are reporting. And number one that I'm looking at, at least you guys probably should be as well, is CCL. And this stock company, along with a lot of other cruise lines and airlines, hotel stocks, travel in general, these are under fire right now because of Omicron, right? The new variant, which is pretty contagious, um, even though from what I understand, at least it's not as dangerous as the other ones, right? So it's contagious, 
A lot of people are getting it, but it's not as dangerous, at least from what I have been hearing. I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. Um, you know, I don't have, you know, practice and this, that, the third. I'm just hearing hearing what, what other people are saying, right? And um, that's kind of what I'm understanding. So this is going to have a problem, or not a problem, uh, an impact on CCL, all of these different stocks in the short term. And it has been. I mean, this stock has been, you know, going down for a couple of weeks now. It's only gotten worse in the past week, two weeks roughly. So with earnings coming out tomorrow with a, a negative dollar twenty seven EPS estimate, I'm looking very heavily at this stock and not only this one, but again, the other cruise lines, some airlines, those travel stocks in general. I want to see how these react to earnings. Well, CCL is probably not going to affect other stocks, maybe other cruise lines, but they're not going to have an effect on airlines. But I want to see overall how Omicron affects these over the next couple days, couple weeks, of course. And I want to see how these earnings um, for CCL in particular affect CCL. So they report, let me see here, pre-market or aftermarket? Actually, it's pre-market. So that's great. We're going to see some action in the morning. And as of now, we are fighting to hold a higher low at 17, 1730, you know, compared to the previous low, which was 1630. So if we fight out of this 50 moving average on the four hour chart after earnings, of course, this might go back to 20 again, uh, maybe right by that 180, uh, 180 moving average. But as always with Omicron, with these stocks, it makes me a little bit nervous, at least in the short term, guys. So I'm going to be watching uh, CCL. Nike is another one that I'm watching very, very heavily this week. As we are on a decent dip right now, the stock is down $18 or about 10%, which means it's in correction territory, guys. It's down about 10%. 20 plus percent would be bear market territory. So like CCL, Nike also reports earnings tomorrow after market hours, unlike CCL, which is before the market. So Nike, they're projected 63 cents of EPS right now with projected sales of 11.25 billion. So I'm very interested in seeing how the China sales are looking like for Nike. Of course, you know, that's a big market for Nike. We all know that, right guys? Um, we're not going to get into that in this video. Yeah, I'm looking at the China sales. I want to see overall how they're doing in the different regions, North America, all that good stuff. Um, and again, I want to see if the stock ends up rallying potentially off of this 10% drawdown from 179 now to 161, which admittedly at 179, the stock was way overbought. I mean, come on, guys. It went from literally 144 in the beginning of October to 179 in the beginning of November. This thing rallied almost $40, a little bit under $40, 20% in just a month it's going to give back some of those gains. And that's what we're seeing. So if earnings are very strong, expect a bounce back in Nike. And if they disappoint just a little bit, this could easily slip down another 5%. Don't be surprised if this starts going back to 150. And the funny thing is, if it goes to 150, right, it's still going to be up compared to where it was just about two months ago, two, three months ago. So keep that in mind, guys. So watch out for Nike. Another one that I'm looking at is Micron, ticker symbol MU. I have a lot of um, analysis here on Micron. As you guys can see, this stock's been breaking out. You know, it was downtrending for a couple of months under the moving averages. And just recently, about a month and a half ago, early November, it started breaking out. We got, we got above the moving averages. We're now seeing a golden cross. We've been seeing a golden cross. And we've been filling gap after gap after gap to the upside. You know, we got up to 75, filled that gap. We filled the gap to 83.20. Now we just did to 86.30, and that's uh, that's where we've been consolidating for about a month at this point. If you guys take a look, the chart's been very choppy since literally a month ago, and now we just got a nice pop above the 180 SMA on Friday on this four-hour chart, above 80 bucks, which is great. Now we're over $84 again, or right above um, 83, very close to $84. So I'm thinking if Micron reports good numbers, which they report tomorrow as well. Um, actually, no, that's wrong. They report on the 22nd. So what is that on Wednesday? If they do well, don't be surprised if, uh, if this starts breaking out to the mid high 80s again. I mean, we're already in the mid 80s, but probably high 80s. That's where I think this uh, could be going in the short term, right? So keep your eyes on Micron. I currently have my alerts set at $87.50. 
RAD is another one that I'm looking at. And wait a second, I almost forgot. Micron's projected EPS is $2.10, where their projected revenue is $7.68 billion. So keep that in mind, guys, for Micron. So the next one is RAD, also known as Rite Aid, right? This is a company that a lot of people shop at, pharmacy, little knickknacks, uh, personal care items, little snacks, whatever you need. I mean, Rite Aid is one of those companies. Same with um, CVS, Walgreens. I put those all in the same basket, right? And this company, it's uh, the stock at least, has not been doing well whatsoever. Let me show you guys this three-year chart. Actually, let me show you the one-year chart. That might be better. Yeah, literally a year ago, in the beginning of 2021, end of January, this hit a high of $32.00. And 48 cents. Now it just hit a low of $11. So this is down 65% over the year of 2021, over the course of this year, which is absolutely insane, right? So it's uh, <laughs> it's almost under $10, guys. It is holding on by a thread with earnings coming up here. Let's see on the 21st. So that is on Tuesday. This is one worth watching because Recently, if I take a look here at their earnings on the bottom, you guys see the little bell icon with the little light bulb. They did a couple earnings ago, 78 cents in the red EPS. Then they pulled a profit, 38 cents. Then they went back in the red, negative 41 cents. So they've been going back and forth, flip-flopping um, between profit, no profit. I'm not sure what their dividend is looking like, if they even pay a dividend. So at this point, maybe Rite Aid is a bit too inconsistent. Investors have been just dumping out of the stock. And uh, they, I mean, they have to have been considering it's down 65% over the past couple of months, over the past almost year at this point. So I want to see if they surprise earnings. Hey, maybe this starts breaking out again. We have seen many times where it's seen a bit of a relief rally over a couple of days, couple of weeks, couple of months. Maybe that happens again. Who knows? Maybe this goes from $11, $12 back to the uh, mid-10s, high-10s, 18 19 That's possible. So watch out for RAD. KMX CarMax is another one. They report this week, ladies and gentlemen. They report on, let's see here, I think Thursday. No, Wednesday. They report on the 22nd. And this chart... Out of all the charts we looked at today, this one looks pretty good. Probably the best chart. Um, take a look at this. Let me show you guys. We're in an uptrending channel on the four-hour chart. Very clear, right? You guys can see higher lows, lower high, or, uh, higher lows, higher highs, all that good stuff. And we just recently hit a high, $155 per share. And I believe we talked about this stock um, last earnings report, it collapsed. We covered it. It rallied very heavily since then. And now it's kind of like the same setup, right? Although I do believe it went down after the report last time. Either way, we're down now around earnings. We're towards the bottom of the channel. We're about 20 bucks off the recent highs. Uh, more like 18. We're down about 12%, which is a good chunk. So with earnings coming up on the 22nd, we're at the bottom of the channel. Let's see if buyers step in here, maybe to start pushing us back to the 140, 145 level. Heck, maybe 150 level, right? So CarMax, the trend looks decent. Pretty good, actually. I don't even want to say decent. It's better than decent, but we just need to see it play out. Um, it's not quite there yet. It's not quite there where we're breaking out, we're, we're uh, breaking the moving averages. We're actually under all the moving averages. So keep that in mind. Watch for the break on KMX. And the next two have very similar patterns. Number one is GameStop, which if you guys are in the whole meme culture, you like the meme stocks. I personally have a very, very tiny amount of exposure to this space, but I like tracking it. You're going to know if you're in this space, GameStop is down a lot. GameStop in just the past month, less than a month, it is down from 250 to 156. It is down 40%, and AMC is not looking much better. I mean, AMC is probably down the same, if not more. So at this point, we're towards the bottom of the wedge here on the 4-hour. You guys can clearly see that. And the past couple of days, we've actually been rebounding. And I'm not sure if this is just a little bit of a relief rally, a bull trap, or if it's a legitimate breakout, it's too early to tell. So I don't want to tell you guys, oh, we're definitely breaking out because 
we're not quite yet, but with how fast these stocks could catch fire, um, they can literally go up 30% in a couple of days. We have to watch it here due to its oversold nature. I mean, we just hit a 127 low, which means from the 344 top that we saw uh, in June, we're now down 65%, a little bit less, but still 60, 65%. That is a lot. And I'm noticing a bullish divergence and I'm noticing, you know, volume kicking up as of Friday as it went up 7%. So I want to see if GameStop simply continues this rally. That is what I'm looking for. So watch out for GME. I'm telling you guys, if it breaks 160, 165, this might touch 190, 200, no doubt in my mind. So keep that, uh, keep your eyes on GME and Tattooed Chef. Like I said, um, these two look very similar in pattern. Tattooed Chef is about from 25 now to 16, 75. It is down about 35%, so not nearly as much as GameStop is down. But like GameStop, where they are similar is the fact that they're both trading towards the bottom of the wedge on the four hour chart. And both of them, we saw bullish divergences. I'm seeing a strong bullish divergence on Tattooed Chef here. And both of them, GameStop and clearly Tattooed Chef, right, is uh, about to break out of the moving average, key 180 moving average on this four hours. So I'm thinking if uh, Tattooed Chef breaks $17 per share, which I'm going to set my alert right now, and we're clearly not breaking out yet, so this could easily be a bull trap, the rally that we've recently seen. But if we do take 17 out, we're going to be at a multi-week high. This might start gaining some steam towards 18, 19, 20, in my personal opinion. But don't get too excited quite yet because Tattooed Chef has done this time and time and time again. And uh, we've seen these little rallies that all have ended up being bull traps over the past couple of weeks slash months. So keep that in mind when it comes to Tattooed Chef. So overall, guys, look, that's what I'm looking at for this week. The cruise lines, I'm looking at Nike, Micron, RAD. I'm looking at KMX with all those cars they're selling or maybe not selling. We'll see how that's looking like. Supply chain problems probably. Um, GameStop, Tattooed Chef. This is what I'm looking at. And for me personally, the markets have been volatile. And you guys in my Patreon know I've been making some moves here and there. There are some new stocks that I've been buying, but it's uh, it's kind of been a little bit quiet at, th at the same time. You know, I have a lot of cash. I'm waiting for some deals. And uh, again, I've made some moves. I've been selling some options, but nothing really too crazy, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up there. If you all enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon, which I just talked about. If you guys want to join that, check it out. It's linked down below. You get all my buys, sells, call outs, morning update videos, and you get more access to me throughout the day. That's on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to StasurFest.com slash Patreon. Don't forget to also get your five stocks from Webull. Use that link. Deposit any amount of money. We each get five stocks and you can get 50 bucks from M1 Finance. Also using that link down below. Depositing 100 bucks with them and we each get 50 bucks. So that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll pop one up here. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.